All right, guys, we can start this. Uh, I think we can start this presentation. Super excited for uh, for this opportunity to speak over here. Thank you to Pip uh, and uh, Pip for putting on this uh, amazing online conference, uh, the Pip Data Driven Event. Uh, it's been super awesome so far. I'm excited to be speaking here. So I'm going to be speaking on launching the next generation of industry leaders, how we utilize data to make key decisions and the future of Web3 as long as talk about deep strategy and go-to-market of Web3 companies. So we all know the benefits of blockchain technology. We know it's secure. We know it's fast. We know that it's transparent. But there's a looming question. Why hasn't blockchain technology taken off yet in the mainstream? There's a few reasons for this. Some of it is price volatility. Some of it is narrative. Some of it is regulation and control and politics. But, uh, you know, we'll be able to, we'll be able to go through that throughout this presentation. So overview, uh, this presentation is gonna be uh, broken down to four segments. First, we're gonna go through and deep dive into the Web3 and uh, the issues with mainstream adoption. Second, we're gonna talk about, we are still early and no, that is not a meme. Third, a consulting firm's perspective on what it takes to launch an industry leader. And last but not least, what are the future Web3 leaders working on and what's next for the Web3 ecosystem. Before we jump into the juicy stuff, let me quickly introduce myself and let you guys know uh, about, about me. So I'm Nero, I'm the founder and CEO of Multichain Advisors. What is Multichain Advisors? Uh, Multichain Advisors is one of the prominent Web3 consulting firms, management consulting firms in the space. We've been around for two, two plus years. We've helped launch over 40 plus companies, uh, helped companies raise over $25 million in uh, uh, funding helped uh, them increase user and growth uh, social media account by over 600,000 and helped create secondary volumes from uh, either launches and collections and whatnot of 40 million plus. Uh, a bit about my Web2 experience, I'm a CPA CA uh, in Canada, went through the accounting route, uh, did 10 plus years in management consulting across the world and accounting, uh, focusing on go-to-market strategy, growth, uh, all that good stuff and m and I've managed M&A deals ranging from $200 million to $3 billion in Silicon Valley and worked in various industries from SaaS, fashion, banking, pharma, and applications. My Web3 experience, uh, along with uh, running multi-chain advisors, I'm also a Twitter Spaces host. Uh, we have the longest running Twitter Spaces on Solana. It's been uh, going on for two plus years, have uh, hosted over 250 spaces and over 25,000 minutes uh, uh, of spaces. So <laughs> been, been, on, uh, been on the mic for a while. And we've had uh, all the big projects, OG projects uh, from Solana to multi-chain projects on there, including uh, Pit. Uh, those spaces are actually powered by Pit, so shout out to them. All right, let's jump back uh, into the important stuff. So addressing the control concerns and hurdles on blockchain adoption. Why hasn't blockchain gone, uh, bl blockchain technology and Web3 gone uh, mainstream yet? One of the reasons is price volatility. Of course, uh, many, of the re many of the reasons we're here in the space is because of price volatility. Price volatility. There's a lot of money to be made with price volatility. There's specific traders, firms, and uh, uh, companies that are able to leverage this and and you know uh, make some really good money off of this. But in general, for the normies, price volatility is uh, is definitely a scare and has been a big hurdle in the past uh, to blockchain adoption. Uh, that's not to say that price volatility has uh, decreased for the most part. Uh, Bitcoin itself has become uh, less volatile. Ethereum and some of the bigger uh, blue chip uh, crypto companies have been more uh, less volatile, but uh, price volatility is still there. Narrative. So in the past, crypto and Web3 has been associated with everything from scams to rugs to um, just just the worst kind of, uh, you know, narratives that, that have been put out there. And this is, you know, amplified with uh, bad actors such as, you know, uh, Do Kwan from Luna, uh, SPF from, uh, you know, FB, FTX and, and so on. So in the past, the narrative hasn't been great and that doesn't really do a great job uh, for regulators, the government or uh, normies to come into the space. Third is uh, technological barriers to entry. Uh, we all know how hard it is to, you know, get our normie friends or our family members to uh, get into the blockchain space. Setting up a MetaMask or Phantom Wallet and putting out like writing down a 24 to 12 word uh, seed phrase is super complicated. And, you know, in this fast paced technology oriented world, 
uh, it doesn't really make sense. So in the past, we've had area, uh, areas of difficulties around that. Last but not least, product market fit. Many companies in the space have uh, created uh, problems or are solving problems that don't even exist yet. And uh, that that's something we've seen time and time in the past. And that's what doesn't that that's why they haven't been able to sustain themselves. Uh, but we are, you know, uh, all this negative stuff, we are we are seeing some changes. So let's jump into the next part. So we are still early and this is not a meme. So the narrative is shifting. So we've seen countries, uh, governments across the world that are actually adopting blockchain technology. They're, they're, they're taking it more seriously, uh, specifically in Asia. Uh, governments are implementing this into their teachings, online learnings, and uh, even a part of uh, uh, many of the big corporations and institute institutions. Dubai and the Middle East is uh, is put this into their 50 to 100 year plan and is uh, very focused on uh, you know blockchain adoption. So the narrative is slowly shifting, even in the US with a potential BTC spot ETF approval. That's going to onboard all the institutions and uh, you know the normies into the space. And with BTC, eventually that will open up the door for other crypto block cryptocurrency and blockchain uh, companies uh, to be adopted. Next up, improved rails and uh, to onboard and retain. So even though we're still early to this, we've come a long way from you know 2017 when there wasn't much uh, many uh, stable currencies. Stable coins and stable currencies have been a, a blessing to the space have allowed users to take profits off their cryptocurrencies and keep it in the ecosystem. And also the ability to transfer that across the world instantaneously, instantaneously and seamlessly with no issues. And uh, so th this has been, this is still early. We're still seeing, we're seeing countries that are adopting stable coins into their government. Japan just uh, recently announced uh, they're in incorporating USDC. A couple of weeks ago, uh, we've seen this uh, happen across the world. So even though it's still early, it, it's come a long way. And also new use cases and more advanced developments. So gaming has, you know, is, is slowly starting to change. We've, uh, in the last bull run, we've seen a lot of games were promising to build a lot of cool things, but never actually got, got along to building it. These different companies have come in and now built exactly that. We're seeing Web3 gaming, uh, you know, develop, we're seeing it form. And it's come a long way, but once again, we're still early. DeFi itself, yeah. If you guys remember Uniswap V1 versus you know the current version, or even Jupiter to compare, uh, it's come a long way. You can do limit uh, orders, you can do DCA strategies, perpetual futures powered by PIT. A lot of different um, uh, innovations have been happening in the DeFi space, but still hasn't fully taken off yet. Um, so we are still early. Data itself, uh, getting secure, accurate data has been uh, you know, super innovated, uh, innovating in the space due to PIP. And uh, that area is still growing and uh, there's more players coming to space. But uh, once again, uh, we're early. NFTs itself, uh, we've used them as PFPs in the past. Uh, you know, they've, they've been kind of a digital identity slash meme. But now we're starting to slowly see legit use cases. We're seeing NFTs as contracts and for commercial use. Um, so you know that that's slowly happening. Last but not least, decentralization. Uh, the the space decentral decentralization is not just a meme, and uh, you know we are seeing real um, opportunities and uh, real execution of decentralization in the space. So next up, I'm going to jump into a consulting firm's perspective on what it takes to launch an industry leader. Uh, obviously, to to launch a, a strong company in the Web two or Web three space, it takes uh, a lot more than just these factors, but these are some of the highlights from our experience as a consulting firm that we, we've seen companies really need help with. Uh, one of the areas is specifically marketing, branding, and narrative. So the Web3 space is a very niche market. Uh, the, the users here, uh, it's an international world. They're, they're not specifically located in one geographic region. And uh, the target market, depending on what you're trying to sell, is, is, is going to be very unique. The, the customer profile is also very different. And we've seen time and time again that uh, Web2 companies have been coming into the space. They've uh, you know tried traditional Web2 strategies uh, that may have worked with uh, you know the normies outside of the crypto space and it completely just misses a spot or isn't heard by uh, the Web3 individuals. So one of the key things uh, you know to, to make, make sure they're successful is is under, understanding, what does a Web3 individuals want? How can they really communicate with these individuals? What are the strategies to get into their communities and uh, really build that bridge? 
and uh, many companies don't really spend enough time to do so. And I, it's it's not it's hard it's not hard to blame them because many of the founders and many of the companies in space are very technologically forward and technology driven, given how complicated blockchain technology is. And uh, so just taking a step back, uh, really uh, drafting this out and, and making a strong plan uh, to address your target market and long term goals is, is a key. Utility and ownership. Uh, one of the key differences of, about the blockchain space and one of the unique aspects of blockchain is is that uh, you own your you own your digital assets, you own your data, and uh, you know technically no one can take that away from you. Uh, with that being said, uh, we've seen that create this this unique uh, utility that uh, many projects have put to their tokens or their NFTs or you know their for their stakeholders. And um, there necessarily doesn't there doesn't necessarily need to be a utility with every um, you know stakeholder uh, share or you know token or NFT, but we've seen that uh, you know it's it's just become a trend uh, over the last bit. And so one of the key things that differentiates a successful industry leader from you know unsuccessful uh, short term uh, company is uh, is building out proper utilities. Figuring out and laying out utilities that make sense over the long term, and making sure that ties in with the long term vision and and uh, capabilities of of the company. We've seen uh, some utilities that work in a short period of time, and then after you know a six month period or a year or two years, it just doesn't work. And the Web three space uh, is very very quick and uh, rapidly changing, so uh, being able to adapt to that is important. Community curation. So given how how this market is still early, as we mentioned, and given that we are in a niche market, uh, getting an organic community, building an organic community of diehard brand ambassadors, diehard um, you know supporters, is one of the best ways to you know really uh, one of the best ways to really uh, be successful in the space. We've seen this happen uh, organically with Solana, right? The Solana ecosystem itself has. Uh, probably one of the strongest and most vocal communities in the uh, blockchain ecosystem. And uh, some of that is due to the hardships uh, that have, uh, uh, you know, fell on the Solana ecosystem over the, over the last bear market, but uh, also, you know, the innovation aspect and the community aspect and DAOs that were formed in there. So companies that are able to craft, curate and, and build out a proper, you know, community that really resonates with their vision are usually able to go the long way. And it, it, we've seen in many cases, they even it's even uh, been able to fend off new competitors, new competitors who might even have better technology, uh, just because, you know, the community is, is, is loyal. And, uh, you know, in, in some cases we have um, seen quote unquote cults, but, uh, you know, that's just, uh, that's just the nature of the space. Governance itself, um, you know, the, given how, uh, the, the Web3 space works. We've seen many DAOs. We've seen governance uh, being implemented into many companies. And you really have to assess what type of governance works for your company, what type of governance works for your technology and the visions and goals of long-term goals of your company. Uh, you know, governance for a decentralized Oracle makes a lot of sense. And I'm excited for uh, governance with PIT that, that's going to be starting in the new year. But governance for uh, maybe uh, specific NFT collections or DAOs uh, maybe might not make sense, right? So really breaking that down and understanding what does this, um, what is the, what does the decision making process look like, and what are the end goals is going to be key to success. Technology, technology education and breakdown. So, you know, we've all had this problem of explaining to our parents, our in-laws, your grandparents, whatever it is. Uh, trying to explain to them what the blockchain, what blockchain technology is, and uh, you know it's it's not super easy to to be able to explain that. Now factor that by ten, because uh, some of the companies over here in the space are building some very specific uh, solutions for very specific problems, and uh, even the Web three users and Web three normies are not able to understand uh, exactly what they're building. So being able to break those complicated concepts into easy. Uh, easily digestible, uh, presentable materials is very key. Uh, creating, you know, specific uh, narratives around that, creating specific uh, brand graphics around that is, is a very key aspect. And so these are some of the 
you know, important things that are needed uh, to build an industry leader. And, and if you look at some of the industry leaders right now, uh, be it uh, Pitt, uh, Coinbase, uh, Binance, uh, you know, Jupiter, Uniswap, all that, you can see that they have created, like they've taken all of this into consideration and have been able to uh, successfully um, execute uh, to become an industry leader. So we've talked about the past, we've talked about the present, now let's talk about the future. So what are the future Web3 leaders working on? And what are we excited for as a Web3 consulting, uh, management consulting company? Uh, real world assets is, is an area that we're super excited for. This is a multi-trillion dollar industry, either uh, on the real estate side or you know just you know luxury goods. Real world assets, uh, bringing that on the blockchain and really uh, utilizing the blockchain to I guess not necessarily decentralize it, but giving everyone access to uh, commercial, residential properties, investments, or even just uh, bringing luxury goods on, on the blockchain. It makes a lot of sense. And uh, we're slowly starting to see companies uh, take that seriously. And uh, eventually I think we're gonna see uh, uh, some big innovations in this area. And also digitalization of equities. I think uh, uh, that's, an, that's a huge, huge area that's uh, very uh, under, um, uh, I guess uh, not really talked about. And uh, that's also a multi-trillion dollar industry that uh, should be coming uh, into the block, into the ecosystem very soon. Deep in itself, uh, and Solana has, you know, really um, taken the lead over here with Helium uh, trying like uh, migrating to Solana, but the decentralized physical infrastructure network is uh, very specific to the, um, to the Web3 space. It's only possible through Web3 technologies. And this is probably one of the, key te technological advancements that blockchain actually solves uh, for the Web2 world and, and something that we're taking a very key look at, uh, especially since there's different types of VCs that are even investing in this space that don't really invest in traditional Web3 companies. DeFi itself, uh, you know, we mentioned DeFi has evolved over, over the you know, last six, seven years, but even that hasn't really taken off yet. And uh, so we're seeing innovations in that we're keeping an eye on DeFi. Uh, we think this is this is still going to be a mass onboarder of uh, of, uh, of of the masses <laughs> but uh, we think um, you know uh, there's still much innovation there and we're seeing many of the problems from the last um, you know the last uh, DeFi bull runs uh, being solved now so we're, it's an interesting area on-chain gaming and web3 gaming in general so you know we've we've seen companies, in the past build games just uh, so that people can earn money off of them. But now we're actually seeing uh, build game builders and publishers build games that are actually fun. Um, and uh, so this is an exciting area for us. We're, we're seeing these companies not necessarily, necessarily copy the uh, the playbook of the esports uh, or the uh, EA sport, EA games and whatnot, but they're, they're, they're looking at, uh, you know, building it from top down and, and taking a different approach. And so this is an exciting area for us. Blockchain and AI match made in heaven. So uh, you know AI has completely uh, taken over all of 2023 and uh, late 2022, and um, you know it has gone, it has rapidly developed, and uh, in 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 some ways very very scary scary uh, innovations have happened. But blockchain's purpose is uh, transparency and the ability to authenticate things, and uh, uh, eventually, e either through regulation or just through technological advancements, uh, blockchain technology will be able to help, uh, um, you know, help the AI field out and make things, uh, you know, make sense for, for the ecosystem. Last but not least, data. Data itself um, is, is being, you know, innovated, uh, the data price feeds and the ability to pull, push, Data and whatnot, Pitt has done a, done a really good job with innovating this space. And uh, I think it's just the beginning. Uh, we've seen Oracle's uh, uh, have great success in the last bull run, and we expect uh, the exact same thing for this next bull run as well. So uh, it's another area that we're keeping an eye on. But uh, that's it, folks. Uh, thank you for listening to my presentation. Uh, if you guys want to uh, get in touch, you can hit me up on Twitter. Uh, my personal Twitter is there, also the company Twitter. and. Uh, Thanks again, Pitt, for putting on this online conference. It's been amazing. Uh, a lot of free uh, alpha and free information, and uh, I appreciate it. Thank you.